spot, Mark III Mondeo, one of my favourite cars. This one, we went for an MOT yesterday and it failed on a few pieces that are kind of all too familiar. So I thought, what I'm going to do, I thought I'd just run around the car and just point out all the bits and pieces on these particular cars that you need to look for if you were going to take yours for an MOT. Because I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe it, well you probably would believe it, but if you take one of these Mark III Mondeos and you compare it to a Mark IV, there are some significant differences in what goes wrong. And obviously, as you've just seen, driver's rear wheel bearing and the coil spring are like flipping the holy grail of these bloody cars, that they are forever going wrong. So anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this up in the air and I'm going to just have a walk round underneath and just point out all the bits I know that are problematic. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, I'm going in. Right, I'm going to start on like the driver's front corner. And I say this car's just been MOT and I've just done some repairs to it. So I'm going to have a, another look over it just to see. Uh, first of all, up there, you've got your track rod end on your hub. Them little joints, they do get knocked out, but that, you could say that for just about any car. But I'm going to work my way round and try and point out things that could be problematic. You see the bottom ball joint there? If you had the front of this car jacked up on the body, you would put a bar between the hub and that bottom arm and you could lever that and that ball joint may well be sort of like worn. These ball joints tend to last a bloody lifetime really. They, they, they are really, really good. I have had quite a few, but usually these cars have to get some pretty damn high mileage before them ball joints get worn out. So uh, that's a good thing. The brake pads are pretty low. I'll tell you, it could do with some front pads in it. That's for sure. <coughs> uh, Anti-roll bar drop link, which is just there. They, uh, they're not too bad, to be honest with you. But obviously, like any car, the roll bar drop links can get knocked out. Uh, front wheel bearings up in there are sort of like, they get worn. There's nothing actually I'm pointing out at the minute that's any much of a problem. But as I said in my last video, uh, that little bearing just up here on the drive, driver side drive shaft, that bearing can get dry and cause a lot of noise and you could think it's a wheel bearing. In fact, it's just a little bearing there. But what I'm going to point out, especially when these cars are getting a bit old now, that little brake pipe just up there that goes to your driver's front, they get rather rusty right there where it goes through the plastic shielding. And you've got to, be, you've got to watch, out, watch out for that one because that, that's something that can be easily be missed. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Anyway, I'm going to make my way around Subframes and these things are generally pretty good. I've never had one rotted out. Radiators, pretty sound. You see this one here, all the, the panelling underneath has gone, where it's all been smashed off. There should be another panel just here. But obviously these are rental cars, so uh, they, te they tend to get in a bit of a flipping, smashed on kerbs and all sorts. And it's mainly the Americans that drive these rentals anyway. So, what can I say? <laughs> I'm, I'm not actually seeing much wrong with this car, but there, there again, there shouldn't be, because it's just had an MOT put on it. Well, I'm not putting it yet. I've got to take it back for its retest. But yeah, it's looking good. The one thing I'm noticing here, there's no oil leaks. It's pretty dry. And what I'll do is I'll look at the mileage in a bit and see what kind of mileage this car's done. Because this is an 05 plate. I will say though, up there, where the auxiliary belt is, keep an eye out for coolant because the water pumps do have a tendency to leak. And we do have what, like automatic gearboxes that, that kind of leak as well. But this one looks pretty good. I might make my way around. Here, here, is, a, here is a problem part, 
which is just about for any car anyway, the actual concertina part on the exhaust, the flexible, the flexible bit, they can break and cause the exhaust to blow. Also, these catalytic converters, they're, they're pretty good actually. I mean, they do last many years, but I've stated before in other videos, these, these engines, these are the, uh, the two litre Duratec petrol engines. When they get worn, they do tend to burn a lot of oil. And then that burnt oil, when that goes through your catalytic converter and destroys it. And then you'll need a new cat as well. Anyway, let's make one. I'm waking my way back now on the driver's side. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, hang on a minute. There's something I missed, which uh, I really need to point out here, and it's to do with the steering rack. Because these are a power steering rack. You've got like fluid going through the power steering. There's, a, there's like a pump on the end, driven by the fan belt, or auxiliary belt, which drives your power steering pump and pumps the fluid through your steering rack. And I'm gonna point something out here. All these Mark III Mondeos, it is a very common problem. If you're sat in your car and you've got your hands on the steering wheel and you're driving in a straight line and you go to, normally it's turning to the left but it could be to the right, I can't remember. The last two I've done is turning to the left. I'll go with that. You're driving along in a straight line, you want to turn to the left slightly but there's, a, there's a, like a, a resistance and there's like a little notch. You've got to go uh, like that to get past this like a little lump in the steering before you can actually turn. You need a new steering rack. It's worn out. We've done loads of them. In actual fact, in the last few weeks, I've just changed two racks on these Mark III Mondeos. And when you drain the oil out of the racks, it comes out all grey and shitty, full of metallic bits, because the rack is just worn out. Probably through lack of oil changes. And we've gone down the route before of actually flushing the old oil out, filling up with new oil to see if it would help it and make it any better, but it doesn't. You need a new steering rack. Just remember that if the steering's like that little notch as you try to turn left, you've got to get a new rack. But they're not that expensive anyway, and they're not a bad job to change. I thought I'd just point that out because that was a really common problem years ago when we had a fleet of these. But now I'm sort of like back on these cars, there's a lot of rentals. I'm experiencing these problems all over again. Anyway, let's get on. I'm, I'm going to try, if possible, not to flipping wave this camera about too much because I'm using my phone. I can't use a normal camera under here, it's just ridiculous. Uh, anyway, brake pipes that run on the driver's side, front to rear, you've just got to be careful. You see where they go in the clips? That's where you've got to look for. Just in the clips, they get kind of shitty. There's a little bit of a scab there, but I mean, it's just a case of keeping an eye on them. I would personally grease them all up, which I'll probably do in a bit. But what I'm trying to say is all these, the brake pipes on these cars are pretty terrible. And I'm gonna show you exactly where to look, apart from looking front to rear, right along here, on the driver's side of the fuel tank, you've gotta look right up there because they can enough rot there. And normally what we have to do is, we have to cut the pipe about there and then join new pipes and run them back to the back end where there's more connectors uh, just up there by the top of the fuel tank. But like I say, them pipes down there can rot really badly. And also, where they go up above the anti-roll bar there yeah. and above the subframe, they can, <laughs> It's really hard to see guys, but up there, <laughs> I can't even, it, I don't think I can show you it up there, but if I can get the light in just right, the pipes up above there get really rotten. There is one pipe, it goes <laughs> like, well, noisy. It, it, they basically sit, but that one there sits above the subframe. You've got to watch every single point of that because it, it, I'm telling you, there are just little bits. You could have a centimetre or less that's rotten and the rest of the pipe would be good. 
So you've just got to follow these brake pipes round and check them out properly. And also, it might not be obvious, but these rear brake hoses, you've got to push them back like that and you can see where they're splitting. So this one isn't split all the way through, but it's getting there. So that, that would be an advisory anyway. Uh, Anti-roll bar drop links, they get knocked out quite regularly, not too much of a problem. The rear calipers, just like any car they can mess up. Uh, the rear springs and the front springs are prolific on these cars. Every single winter you're going to have broken springs, especially when these cars get a few years old. They're under a lot of tension and they're forever breaking. It's just, it's just a trait of, of, the, <laughs> of these Mark III's. The bushes there, the four bushes that hold your rear subframe to the body, you see where they're... Let me get the light. See where they're just flaking here? That's not too much of a problem, but the bush can literally separate from its metal sheathing and you can literally pull the subframe and it can move about like that. So uh, that case, you've got to take the subframe off. And, and by the way, if any of these rear brake pipes are worn out or rotten, then you need to change them. The easiest way is to actually take the subframe off. Just, it's only like four bolts and a few more around here. And you can take the whole subframe completely off the car and it's a lot easier to change them brake pipes. Uh, as corrosion goes, you need to look up inside, like the, the back wheel arches, I don't see too much corrosion on these cars, but I'll tell you where they do rot a bit. The sills just here, you can get rotten patches. So uh, they're not bad really for sort of like rot, but you know, I know this is nothing to do with MOT, but these cars did suffer quite a bit from, sort of from corrosion here and there. They do get quite rusty. Anyway, get back in under here. Uh, yeah, the, the calipers can be a problem, they can get sticky, but the main, I'd say that the main problem with the brakes on these, I haven't got inside the car yet, but normally if you pull the handbrake up, you can tell if there's a handbrake cable problem, generally by the way the handbrake lever will pull up, if it pulls up quite high and it doesn't feel like it's really doing much, because these, these cables, they seize up prolifically. And what happens is the lever there gets pulled in and it will stay in. It won't hold the brake on all the time, but it's, it's like once these levers are pulled in, that's it, the handbrake cable is seized up and you're going to have to get a new cable. And most of these cables, you've got to drop the exhaust down. There's a, I think on the early ones, they had an automatic adjuster on the handbrake lever, which is a right pain. But these ones have got like a manual adjuster, which is above that center exhaust box. So you've got to drop that central exhaust box and the tin shield down in order to flip in, adjust it. But they're not too bad to change. But like I say, the, the, the cables are a problem. They never were very good. If I come out to the back. I always noticed on the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Mondeos, the bumpers are always broken. These ones, <coughs> These, these ones never seem to be broken really, <laughs> they're doing a lot better. The exhaust systems on these cars, I will say, they last pretty much the lifetime of the car. You've got, you've got a broken bracket just there, but that can be welded back on. Uh, as exhausts go on petrol cars, these do incredibly well. And this car is still on its original exhaust, I can tell that because you see the, the back box, it's still part, all part of one system. If, if this, any of this exhaust had been changed, it would have been cut here and it would have been a different back box. So it's still on the original exhaust. And this is an 05 plate. It's like 16 years old now. So it's not doing bad. Uh, anyway, over to the passenger side. Rear shock absorbers, not too much of a problem. There's another brake pipe above the 
subframe there, keep an eye on that one there, just where it bends round is, is where, where it bends round <laughs> the chassis and on, on, on the top part of the subframe is where they go, they rot. These arms, suspension arms, can get bent if you're not careful, if you hit something too hard, you've got to keep watching out for them. The rear wheel bearings are worse, I mean the, the front wheel bearings in these cars can go, obviously. Uh, if I compare the front wheel bearing on one of these cars to a Mark IV, the Mark IVs do much better. But the rear wheel bearings, like this one I've just changed, they're forever going. They're not the best of wheel bearings. In actual fact, let me just show you this bearing. Yeah, I have changed many of these rear bearings over the years. They have an ABS sensor built into them. They're a hub unit. So you buy it like that, one complete unit. But this, this particular bearing I've just changed, he felled it on the MOT. There is like play in the flange, so there's, there's the movement in the bearing. And also, if I try and turn it, it <laughs> you know like you're supposed to just spin them? You can't spin this. It's like notchy. It's like notch, notch, notch. That's, uh, that's really quite bad. I don't know if you can hear that. That is, that is rough as arseholes, I'm telling you. <laughs> Flipping heck. <laughs> I tell you what, whoever was, whoever was driving this car, this must have sounded like a bloody airplane taking off. Woo! Oh my God. And also, I will point out when you change these, they're normally held on by these <laughs> Torx bolts. If my camera will focus. Now these were absolutely covered in rust. I did. I did make a video where I replaced one of these bearings and I, I, I struggled to get these bolts out because they were so rotten. But yeah, you've got to be careful. You've got to hammer the socket, the Torx 50 socket, firmly into them and then undo them carefully. Because if you spin that head off, then you're in trouble. Anyway, the, bear, oh, the bearing I fitted to this car, let's see, what, what is it? It's a... Uh, well, it just says, it just says national, national wheel hub unit. We only, we only fit the, uh, the top quality parts here. <laughs> I'll come back under here again. Well, I could, be, I could talk about wheel bearings for flipping hours. You see that rear shock absorber, and this, this applies to the front shocks as well. You've got like a 15 mil bolt up there holding the shock absorber to the hub. Them bolts can be seized in badly. And I'll tell you something, if you have to change the spring, which is the most likely thing that's going to break, well, it's not likely it is going to break at some point because they're always breaking. Uh, if that bolt ain't going to come out, then leave it alone, I'd say. Just leave it the bloody hell alone. Just unbolt, the, there's two 10 mils that hold the shock to the actual body under the wheel arch. You've got a, an 18 mil there, You've got two 15 mils on these swinging arms and the brake caliper and all that, obviously. And just take the whole hub off. It's so much easier. Oh, actually, oh here's another thing. The, the steel wheel rims on these, I noticed this from the Mark I and Mark II Mondeos. They had quite a thick steel rim. These rims are sort of like a lot thinner. And we've had a lot of cases where you can get a crack in the rim. So uh, watch out for that. They're not the best of, best of metal, if you know what I mean. They're a bit thin. As far as everything else that I can see on these cars, there's not that much. Well, obviously, tin shields on the exhaust. They, they bloody rot where the nuts hold them on. And then the shields all fall down and rattle about and God knows what. But that, that honestly, that can be on any car. Anyway, that's probably about it under here. So, uh, but yeah, rust isn't that much of a problem, if you know what I mean. It's only mainly on the outer seals that you're probably going to get, you could get some holes. Generally speaking, underneath, you won't see much in the way of corrosion. So yeah, right, anyway, I'm going to come back out from under here. I'll just lift this bonnet. Not that there's a great deal of point, if you know what I mean. 
because there's not much you're going to see wrong underneath one of these <laughs> it's obviously check your brake fluid level they're good engines though two litre Duratec they're good until they start burning oil and they, they will all eventually start burning oil it's just a trait of the engine good timing chain though I've done a video on replacing that chain uh, yeah they're not bad cars actually but it's just like well, at the end of this video I'll just reel off very quickly just the main things to watch out for but I'm going to just check this handbrake lever because sort of like the, the handbrake rear brakes always a problem on these bloody things normally this these levers they pull up and they feel like they're loose and there's there's nothing happening for so much travel then you know there's a problem this one that's that's really good that's a good handbrake there isn't a heck of a lot to go wrong in here apart from what could happen to any car crack windscreens the, the instrument packs i will say they've got bulbs they've got like three watt bulbs to illuminate them and quite often these bulbs can can go and you've got to take the instrument pack out to actually change them but uh that's not an mot failure but just saying it's, it's annoying to have like half your dash in darkness when the other half is lit up sun visors they can get they can get a bit sort of like broken and loose and flapping and hanging around you have to replace them the seats the seats i will say if you compare these seats to the Mark 1 and 2 Mondeos, these are much improved. These are much more robust. You can get the driver's seat broken, depends how big a person's been sitting on it. But they're, they're very good seats, I must say. But yeah, no, I mean, in all honesty, they're not bad cars. They last well. If you look after them, these, these, these will go on forever. They were ever so well. I'm highly impressed with them. Of course, if you've got like one of the, the ST models, so <laughs> then they're, they're sort of like collector's items now, because they're all getting on now. That's a, that's a bloody sure. Like this old 05 plate, it's still okay. <laughs> I mean, it's just an everyday drive about. It's rented out all the time. They very rarely give you much trouble. So, can't complain. So anyway, I thought I'd just sort of like have a walk around underneath one of these cars and just point out a few bits and pieces to keep an eye on. But to be honest with you, they do pretty well, I must say. For an old car now, <laughs> there's a lot of them today, they're still holding up ever so well. We've got like 50, 60 of these here. And I've got to admit, we don't do much to them. Brake pipes, brakes, Coil spring, flipping look at this. This is, this is one, this is a rear spring, which weren't too bad. Completely bust. The front springs on these, the one annoying thing is that they can break literally anywhere. No, look like this one has broken on the bottom. So, no big deal. But a lot of these springs, especially on the fronts, they'll break in the middle, believe it or not. And then the whole car can, so the springs can come past the, the shock absorber turret and flipping, even hit on your tyre and, and put a hole in your tyre. So, <laughs> and you'll, you'll certainly know if a spring's gone because the steering will be really sort of like, <laughs> making all kinds of strange noises. But yeah, they're, they're really good cars, I must say. Bit of corrosion on the seals, maybe. Broken springs all the time. Uh, seized up handbrake cables. Steering racks, they were a common one. So anyway, I've got another one of these cars I'm going to MOT now. I'm going to MOT this one myself and I'm going to go around it. And I'm going to see if I can find anything else wrong, just in case I've missed something. So uh, I'll be back in a minute. Well, an hour, should I say. Failed! MOT failure. Wheel bear in rough. Driver's front. I'll come to that in a minute. It's either the bearing, I will say. 
When you drive down the road, okay, straight line, and you've got a wheel bearing noise, generally speaking, whether you turn slightly to the left or slightly to the right, the wheel bearing noise will either get worse or it will go altogether. That's a sign it is definitely a wheel bearing. However, on this car, if I move to the left or to the right, the actual wheel bearing noise doesn't really change, which makes me think it's that drive shaft bearing. But well, I'll rip that apart in a bit and I'll have a look. Uh, what else have we got? Handbrake, surprise, surprise. Driver's rear handbrake isn't working, I'll show you in a minute. I reckon the cable seized up. I'll just start off quickly showing you this handbrake. I will say that is not the original cable. That's an aftermarket cable. But right at the back there, you can see where it's pulled in. Because that, <laughs> well that, that lever, I'm trying to put my light somewhere, but that lever should be right out there. It, there's a little stop at the top here that the actual lever will rest upon, and, uh, but that's pulled in. So the handbrake's doing nothing. And also this back brake, it's, it's definitely binding quite badly. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this cable off and then find out whether it is actually the cable or the caliper, because it could be either at this point. This side, you can see what I mean, how the, how the lever's right out. And it will actually, it will push in when the handbrake is, is applied and then it should release and go back out again. So, uh, that one's good. But yeah, I'll get this one. And also you can see, when you follow the cable round, you can see up there, above the exhaust, there's no tin shield in this one, which makes the job a, a whole lot easier to do now. There's your adjusting nut. So uh, I, can, I can unhook the cable, but usually you've got to drop the exhaust down off its rubbers so you can get to it properly, because it's a bit tight up there. Mind you, before I just rip that cable off, let me just show you that, what I was saying earlier, how you know if you've got a problem with your handbrake. You see that lever, all that play in it, it's got a lot of like slack before it does anything. So uh, yeah, anyway, I've got the wheel off. This is definitely the caliper. I pulled the cable off, so that's completely... In fact, if I get that cable out of the caliper altogether... So the cable is disconnected from the handbrake. The actual lever is still really tight. So before I, before I change it, I'm just gonna spray some oil on the lever. And what I can do is I can put a pair of mole grips on here and wriggle it about and see if it will free off. So here we go. This is if you don't want to pay out for a new caliper. This, I mean, sometimes this does actually work and it cures the problem. This car has been sitting around, so there's a good chance it's just needs a bit of freeing off. But that's actually, you see, you see now, now I push it, that way and let go it comes back where the springs working that's a good sign if it wasn't coming back by itself then we could probably say the, it, the caliper's definitely knackered so what i'll do i'll keep working this for a little while i'll put plenty of freeing oil on it and if it's it's freed off quite well now it's returning nice and easily so uh i think we might be in luck okay keep going that's working perfectly now and if you hold the handbrake just on fully, yeah. now the handbrake's on, if I get my bar through there, yeah! right, let it off. There, look at that. Not binding either. Fantastic. Yeah! It's a nice feeling when you haven't got to spend any money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Woo! Before I rip this wheel bearing off, let me just show you something else which has emerged on this car. We shut the bonnet and it wouldn't bloody open again, surprise, surprise. 
You see these plastic extension pieces and you've got your bonnet lock here, you put your key in. Two shear bolts. Uh, let me just say something. If you get in a situation where you put the key in here and you can't open your bonnet because the plastic, there's something wrong, it's, it's not turning this plastic bit to open the latch. Sometimes you, have, you can either smash this entire grill off or you can literally cut a hole just there with a little cutter. Then you can get to the shear bolts. You can use a pin punch to undo your two shear bolts. But the problem is, what's generally going on here is this plastic piece, where the ball joint on the end of this lock goes into the plastic bit, it, it gets worn so that it will keep popping off. So what you do is, you can get a piece like a little clip and shove it down there in between the, the little holes so the ball joint can't come off. In this case we've used like some wire. So we've fed some wire through there and tightened it up in a knot. So now there's no way I can pull this plastic bit off. It's on there nice and secure. So when I put this back on the, on the car I can undo the bonnet, no problem now. Because if I didn't do that, but I say that plastic bit gets worn inside and it will keep popping off the popper on here. And then you, to buy a new one of these lock, you can't buy this plastic by itself unless you go on eBay. But from Ford, you're probably talking about 50, 60 quid for one for a kit. And you don't want to spend that. So I shall pop this back in there. Two 10 mil bolts will hold it on. Job done. So now that's all bolted back on with two 10 mils that can come out nice and easy the next time rather than them stupid bloody shear bolts. Key in, turn it to the left to start with. That would release, you can't see that bit, but that will release the latch. And when you do the, turn it to the right, it releases this bit here, which is your secondary catch, your safety catch. So that's all working lovely now. Now we can open the bloody bonnet. Now I'm not sure whether this is the wheel bearing or the drive shaft bearing, but if I spin the wheel, it doesn't, the, wheel, the actual doesn't really sound that bad. I can hear the noise up the road, but if I put my left hand on that coil spring and I spin that wheel, I can feel like, I can feel the rough vibrations through that coil spring yeah, coming off this wheel. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the wheel hub off and then I'm gonna feel the bearing in my hand. If the bearing feels okay, I'm going to take the drive shaft out because I'm, I'm putting my money on the drive shaft bearing. As all these cars are getting pretty old now, I seriously recommend using a wire brush on any bare threads and plenty of freeing oil. And one thing that is a little bit concerning is this drive shaft where it goes through the, the hub flange they seize in there and they can be seized in really tight. I'm hoping this one's not going to be seized, but that's the, it feels pretty solid. I, I get the feeling I'm going to have to air chisel that out. The anti-roll bar nut actually come off quite easily, which is a bit of a surprise. All the nuts and bolts get really rusty and deteriorating. And like this, all I've undone the 18 mil nut on the bottom ball joint, the bolt is solid through there as well, through the hub. So <laughs> I'm going to have a go at trying to knock it out with a pin punch. Failing that, I'd have to get the air chisel onto it. So here goes. That is tight. It's gone. Lucky, lucky I've got a big hammer. Bingo. Yeah. This is definitely going to need cleaning up on the wire wheel and some copper grease putting on it. Lovely. Can I just point something out here? Typically speaking, a big hammer and a good pry bar are a must. I'm putting plenty of freeing oil on that bottom ball joint but I'm going to take the whole leg off because it's, it's, a tr it's difficult getting the shock absorber out. So if I could just get the whole leg off it would be great. There, that's our ball joint out. 
I think my worst fears are confirmed. This drive shaft is solid through the hub flange. So I've, I've, tried, I've tried spraying some oil in there, not that it's going to do much good. And I'm going to put this nut on so I don't damage the threads. And I'm going to see if the air chisel will punch it out. So here goes. Wow! <laughs> it's actually moved. I'm impressed. Bingo! That wasn't as tight as what I thought it was going to be. That's good news. Now, yeah, come out of the bloody way. That's good. That's, <laughs> that, that, these air chisels, and I've saved a lot of time sometimes, that'd be hard work though trying to punch it out of a pin punch. So I'm happy. You know, I was actually convinced that this was going to be the drive shaft bearing, but it's not. It is actually the wheel bearing. Listen to this. That's rough. That's noisy. The thing is that the actual brake discs, they're not great on this. They're a little bit worn, a bit finished. So I'm going to smash the brake discs off, stick a new wheel bearing in it, and that'll be it. I won't have to bother about doing the drive shaft bearing now. I could check it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to because I'm pretty sure this is what it is now. This, by the way, this car's only done 112,000 miles. So it's not really that high mileage. But even like doing that, I, I can actually feel the roughness in that, in that bearing on the disc. So yeah, it is definitely a bearing. Now I've got this far, I'm just thinking I could leave the shock absorber on the car and see if it will come out of here. But it, it, it all depends on this 15 mil bolt, whether it'll come out or not. So. Yeah. Oh. Oh my God. It, it's moved. It's actually gone. Hold it there. <laughs> wow. Woohoo. I've got a pin punch here, which is bent at the end. And that's, a, that's my special tool to get out the back of the shock absorber to like spread it out so it will slide straight off the hub. So I can pop that pin punch there and it's away from the shock absorber. There, see that? It's coming apart already. Now with any luck, yep, straight off. Right, Ryan's going to knock the old disc off. Oh, maybe not. They're, they're, they're pretty damn tight. It does look like it's tight. There she goes. There she blows. You'd better take a seat now, mate, and have yeah, a little I'll, rest. I need a 20 minute break now. Yeah, go and play with your phone. Yeah, I will do. <laughs> Well, well, uh, I'm not going to show how to change this wheel bearing because I'm sure there's a million people on YouTube that have already showed that. But yeah, that don't feel great. So I'll waste this. The trouble is we haven't got a proper press down here that's really strong enough. So I'm going to go down the other garage, get this pressed out, stick a new bearing in, and then pop it back on the car. Okay, one wheel bearing fitted. I will point out though, your little ABS sensor there, you don't have to take it out. You can literally press it out and leave the sensor in place. But that's, oh, that's lovely now. Nice and smooth. And just to show you, it definitely was the wheel bearing. I took the old one apart. Well, I had to smash this one apart anyway. You see all these nice silver balls. This was the outer race which are all still good and they've got grease on them. I had to, I, I've done that myself with the angle grinder to cut it off the flange, so you've got to bang it off. But the inner race, the one with the ABS ring on it, magnetic ring, if I can push it out. Come on. Yeah, look at them. Look how gold they are. When, when the ball bearings are not chrome anymore, when they go a gold color like that, they're screwed. So uh, that, was, that was our noise all along. Rough wheel bearing. It's amazing how <laughs> they don't look, they don't actually look like they've got any 
thing chipped off them or anything, but they're flipping it, they were rough. It was rough to spin. Anyway, I'm going to bung this hub back together and then we're just about done. Yep, there we go. Just about in place. If you don't put the pin punch down there to spray that hub out, you'll, have a, you'll be struggling trying to get it on because it'll be really tight. Anyway, 15 mil bolt. I've cleaned the threads up and put a load of copper grease on it. So uh, make sure that's started properly on the threads. Whack it up. Done. I did undo the clamp that's holding this drive shaft to the block and I was able to get the bearing away a little bit and just spin it and the bearing is fine. So I know I didn't want to get it all back together then find out it, it was a combination of the wheel bearing and the drive shaft bearing, but it's not. The drive shaft bearing's perfectly fine, thank God. That's tight. Right, this is where the old lever bar comes in handy. You've got to push that bottom arm down. It's under quite a lot of tension. And you can put your ball joint in the hole and push the hub in. And with a little tap, bingo, we're in. The bottom ball joint is a Torx 55 headed bolt. You'll probably have to hold it when you're doing up the nut but I've cleaned it up and greased it and so uh, we'll whack it up now. Ta -da! You'll notice whenever you do one of these jobs you tend to get a lot of rust <laughs> come off the car. Time for a sweep up. <laughs> nice. We're nearly done, but as per usual, there's always something that doesn't quite work out. The discs and pads that I ordered didn't arrive, so I've been on the phone to them, they forgot to send them out. <laughs> so I've got to wait for them to arrive now. So I might as well just uh, go and sit down for a little while and play my phone. Morning, Molly. What's with the clipboard? I'm doing an audit today. Sounds boring. What are you doing an audit on? You, Alan. You and your bullshit. That's what I'm auditing. Merry Christmas. This is it, the moment of truth. When I spin this wheel, will this spring still feel rough? Here we go. Nope, it's nothing at all. Wheel bearing scenario cured. Now I can go down and get my MOT on this car. That's it, job done. I'm going to run this car back down the MOT centre, get my 12 month ticket on it. But yeah, if you want, the whole point of this video was just like a check around underneath, see what goes wrong with them for MOT purposes. The Mark 1 and Mark 2 Mondeos, I, I, I just wish I had one here because they've got different suspension on them and there'd have been a heck of a lot more to talk about. By the time year 2000 came around and these cars came out, the suspension on them had, well, it had improved immensely apart from the bloody coil springs. So just remember, if you own one of these, coil springs and wheel bearings are going to be your biggest problem. Once you get to like the Mark IV Mondeos, 
I, I can't ever remember having a broken spring on a Mark IV. I think I had a back spring broken once, a long time ago. But I've never seen a front spring broken on a Mark IV. And as for the Mark Vs, I've never had, a, definitely never had a spring broke. But they've got some pretty thick springs on them cars. And the suspension on the Mark IVs and the Mark Vs is an improvement over these ones. They've, they've become more robust. Whoop, bit of a water leak over there. I don't believe you wanted to do that, did you? Ryan's not having a very good time at the minute. No. He's doing a clutch on a Land Rover Discovery four-wheel drive. It's a bastard. <laughs> Absolute bastard. It's one of those jobs I wish I never took on. Well, good luck with that. Looks like I didn't pull the short straw this time. Anyway, that's it for today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.